Hey everybody, this is Jordan from Serendipity 08 and in today's video I wanted to share a couple quick tips on how you can better utilize Google Sheets in your Amazon FBA business. So specifically in this video I'm going to discuss how we can import Keepa charts directly into our sourcing sheets and then also how we can extract supplier names directly from source URL links. Uh, these are both things that we do utilize quite a bit in our own business and they are things that can keep us uh, more better organized and just make things a little bit more efficient for us. So you can see I just have a small data set of a couple of ASINs in here and I have a couple of formulas up here for the, uh, the Keepa formula and the supplier formula. So what I'm going to do first is show you how we can import Keepa charts directly into a sourcing sheet. And so you may want to do this um, if you just want to have a quick reference for how a Keepa chart looks. Say if you have like some VAs that have some sourcing sheets, um, this can give you a visual for how the Keepa chart looks before you even go into the product. So it can just make your filtering through your buy sheets a lot quicker. So we can see that we have a tab over here labeled Keepa already. And the formula that we're using is up here. So this will be in the link of the description of this video. Uh, but what we're doing is we are importing an image and then we're using a graph directly from Keepa. So this is the link here, the graph. And then what we're doing is we're using the settings from Keepa to indicate what information we want on that graph. So uh, with Amazon equals one, that indicates that it will show if Amazon is on that listing. Uh, new equals one, that will indicate um, that is going to show the new prices on that listing. The domain equals CA. So you can adjust that for any marketplace that you want to look at. So in this case, we are doing CA for Canada. But if you want to say do the US, you can do .com, etc. Uh, the width is going to be the width of the graph that we are producing. Uh, the range here, we have ours set for 90. And this would be for the amount of days you want the graph to produce. So typically, you would do 31 for one month, 90 days for uh, three months, 180 for six months, or 365 for a year. And then we have a bit of a additional formula in here. So it's going to pull the ASIN for us automatically. So you can put the ASIN in here if uh, manually if you want, but this formula is telling us to automatically pull the ASIN from column G. So we have it set at column G right now, but we can see that our ASIN is in column D. So we're going to adjust this formula here from column G to column D. And the way that this is just set up is it's telling the formula to pull the ASIN from column D for whatever column that this is in. So if it's in this column, it'll pull it from six and call in row seven, it'll pull it from seven, et cetera. Uh, the sales rank section here, uh, when it indicates one, this will uh, show you the sales rank drops. And then finally, we have the height of the Keeper graph. So that is the height that it's going to produce. So you can adjust these again, however you see fit, but we are going to use this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of this guy here. We're gonna change this to, I'm gonna go 250 and we're going to change this to about 100. It doesn't have to match exactly uh, what your uh, indications were in the formula here. Uh, that's just the size of the graph it'll actually produce. So resize here. We're going to resize this to 100. Now I'm going to copy this formula. We're going to paste it in here. And we can see that it's going to produce a graph for us. And we can see that in the graphs, um, it tells us the product disc or the product name up top. Uh, in these guys, it shows us the current selling price and then the sales rank drops. And then of course, if Amazon is on the listing, it'll have the yellow highlights as well. And then this is a 90 day graph. And so um, this is being imported. Um, so each time you refresh the spreadsheet or every time you come back into the spreadsheet, this will update live for you. So even if you have this in here and you come back, say, six months down the road, this will be an updated graph. So this is something that is pretty handy to have. Um, again, if you are looking through buy sheets on a regular basis, it can give you a visual indicator right in the sheet. So you don't even have to open listings that don't interest you at all.
And if it doesn't detect that there's a listing, um, it will just say something like invalid request, like this guy here. And another way that you could utilize this is say if you want to cross source marketplaces, you could uh, consider using this as well. So say we have a buy sheet for a bunch of products for the Canadian market, and we want to see if they are also viable in the US market at kind of a quick glance. It's not perfect, but what we can do is we can change the keep a graph uh, in the domain here from .ca to .com, and that will produce us the keep a graph for .com. And we can adjust that, take that formula, sit in here and here and here. And now this is, you'll see that these updated. Now this is telling us that these are what the keep graphs looks like in the US marketplace. So that could be a nice uh, additional way that you can utilize that guy as well. So yeah, I just think that this is a super handy feature, uh, something that I just recently was introduced uh, to and something that I do think um, a lot of people could benefit from. Okay, so the second thing I wanted to discuss in this video, and if you are a member of Serendipity OA, or if you have uh, ever purchased one of our um, order tracker spreadsheets, you would be familiar with this formula already. But one formula that we use quite heavily in our business is a supplier formula. And this formula, what it does is it actually pulls the supplier name into column A uh, when we have a URL entered into column F. And so this is the formula that we have up here. Again, this formula will be in the uh, description of this video. But what this is doing is this is just extracting information from column F. So we can adjust that if we have our source URL in a different column. And again, it's uh, indexed, so it's indexed per individual row. So you don't need to adjust, you don't need to adjust that uh, for each individual row here. I'm making a change, let me adjust that. And then what is what it's doing is it's removing additional information in here as well. So it's removing things like www, um, if it has store, shop, CA, Canada, chapters, wholesale, things like that. So it'll actually remove that information out of your link um, and then just give you the supplier name. And so I'll show you an example here. So we will grab this formula. We will put in our supplier column. And then we will type in a source URL. Say we want to source from walmart.ca slash some bunch of random gibberish. It'll then tell us Walmart right here. And again, if we have the Walmart link with www. it gives us the same results. And even if we have an HTTPS, like a full link like that, it'll just produce us Walmart. And it works with literally any source link that you throw at it. Um, if there is some additional information that you need to pull out of the link from the front of the link, like say, I don't know, there was links that you're looking at for some reason that say US in front of it a lot. You can go US. You can just put like another little uh, bar right here. Bar right there and then put US and then it will pull the US portion out from the front of the URL as well. I'll show you one more example here. So we will copy this down here and say we are buying something from amazon.ca slash. And again, we can see that it pulls up the supplier for us right here. So the way that we utilize this is we actually have a custom formula added into SellerAmp for uh, column A. So it exports the formula for us automatically. Uh, we always input the source URL and the products that we are exporting to our uh, various sheets that we're using. So it'll export all the information for us that we need, including the source URL, and then the formula will kick in and it'll automatically put the supplier over here for us as well. So yeah, these are just a couple quick tips that I hope that you do find useful. And again, um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always leave them in the comment section of the description of this video, or you can always contact me via our website, uh, serendipityoa.ca, or you can also join our uh, really fast growing Canadian Seller Discord, and the link for that will be in the description down below as well.